I'm Anil Kumar and here is a practice test question of my student. Now it's very difficult to explain me the solution and therefore I thought I will take this question and split it into two parts to explain how to really answer such questions. Well that is the solution probably for the question as this is answer key. Uh, but my solution will be kind of different and I follow a very simple approach let us see how to solve such questions. Right? So the question before us is determine domain and range of y equals to 5 cosecant minus 2 theta plus pi by 3 minus 2. So really we want to sketch this function but before sketching let us understand the function itself. So we'll do sketching in part 2 of the same function. So now we will just concentrate on writing domain and range of y equals to 5 cosecant minus 2 theta plus pi by 3 minus 2. Let me rewrite this function as y equals to 5 in the numerator and denominator cosecant is 1 over sine, correct? So we could write this as sine of, I will take minus 2 as a common factor, so minus 2. So we are left with theta plus becomes minus and pi by 6 since we will divide by 3, correct? Pi by 6. So that is one part minus 2. So that is how the equation can be seen, right? So this bracket close. So 5 e, y equals to 5 cosecant minus 2 theta plus pi by 3 minus 2 can be written as 5 divided by sine of minus 2 theta minus pi by 6. So that becomes the equation, right? Cosecant is 1 over sine. Now let us try to find what is the domain range of this function and in the next video we'll actually sketch this function. So the steps are that first let us try to uh, roughly sketch the function itself. So, which is the sine function, right? And then we will do reciprocal of that and then we will find its domain range. Now, domain really means that all the zeros of this denominator will be the vertical asymptotes and will not be in the domain of the given function, correct? So, we need to find zeros of sine of minus 2 theta minus pi by 6, correct? That is the basic issue. Now in this equation, what is the time period? We know the value of k is, is 2, minus really means it is reflected. We will see that part later while sketching. So the time period t is 2 pi by 2, that is to say pi. So everything repeats after pi. So let's consider the sine function itself first. Sine function is kind of like this. So it of course repeats, but we'll just see one cycle for the time being. So sine function basically has three zeros. One is at zero, the other one is at pi, and then we have it at two pi, maximum minimum values, as you know, are at plus and minus one. Now when I say sine minus two, that means horizontally it gets compressed by a factor of half, correct? So these zeros will come half of units like this, right? So that is sine function. So if I do sine of, let me write this as sine here, let's say sine theta, okay? Now if I do sine of 2 theta, let me write down sine of 2 theta, then basically all these points will come half ways, we'll have uh, two waves, right? So we'll have two different waves, one with a period of pi, correct? So we'll have one wave which is kind of like this and the other wave which will be kind of like this. So within a period of two pi we are going to have two waves. Now for this particular wave which we are saying sine of 2 theta, the zeros will be at 0, pi by 2, correct, pi, and 3 pi by 2, and so on. That means every multiple of pi by 2. Do you see that? That is the zeros, right? 
Now, since this wave is periodic and the time period is pi, all these zeros will be at pi by 2, I should say n pi by 2 plus pi, correct? So these are for sine 2 theta. But really, our expression is sine of minus 2 theta. When we say minus, it basically means that the wave gets reflected, right? on the x-axis. Sine of minus, let me write down here, sine of minus theta is equals to minus sine theta. Is that okay? So basically, minus means that the wave will become like this. Kind of. This is actually, I know I'm reflecting it on y-axis, but since it's periodic, it goes on the other side, actually speaking. So when we are talking about the other side, so it gets reflected since minus sine of minus theta is minus sine theta. I could write like this. But the zeros remain at the same position. Do you understand? Zeros remain at the same position. Now, you are moving zeros pi by 6 units to the right. So every zero moves pi by 6 position to the right. That is, that is, <coughs> finally, this, this equation is, let me write down this equation also. This equation is minus sine 2 theta, right? So, since I'm using like this, I could actually take this, I could write this as minus sine theta minus pi by 6 also. Since sine of minus theta is minus sine theta, that is the logic, correct. Anyway, let's look into zeros. So, our zeros now get shifted pi by 6 units to the right. So, basically, the position of the zero will now be at, I'm not sketching a wave now, but I'm just shifting these zeros by pi by 6. These are the positions at which the zeros will shift. Do you see that? These are the positions, right? Since it's going to really mess it up, so I'm not really doing it. So, so the zeros now will be at pi by 6. And as you can see, our zeros were spaced by pi by 2, every pi by 2, so plus n pi by 2, do you understand, where n belongs to integers. So that becomes the position of the zero. So it is same on the left side also, correct? So that is going to be the position of zeros. They shifted by pi by 6 to the right of every pi by 2. You get my point. So that is the zeros for for the function which we are treating as. Uh, you could also write this as sine of minus two theta minus pi by six. Is that okay? So for this particular expression, zeros have been shifted. Now these zeros are in the denominator, and therefore we are going to have vertical asymptotes on these zeros perfect and since we have vertical asymptotes here so the domain of our function will not include these points right so the domain is theta belongs to all real numbers but theta is not equal to pi by 6 plus n pi by 2 where n belongs to integers do you get the idea? So that is the domain for the given function. Okay. Now we know the domain. Now let's find the range for the function. Now to find the range of the function. Now function we mean a cosecant function we're talking about, right? So that is the function. So which is reciprocal of the given function. So when I have to draw the reciprocal, so let me just sketch reciprocal. So 1 reciprocal will be 1, minus 1 reciprocal will be minus 1, and we have shifted already our domain. So that means these peaks are going to also shift, right? So, so these peaks are also going to shift by so much unit, correct? So we will have kind of function here, which will be kind of like this, right? So on this side, we'll have shifted peak, and then we'll have a function here, correct? kind of like this. Do you see that? So this will be kind of like this. <clears throat> okay, 
Now that is a cosecant function. Now these values get multiplied by 5. So these values are at 1. Do you see that? These values get multiplied by 5 and you take away minus 2 from them. So what you can also do is think like this. What is the range of cosecant x? In general, let me, okay. In general, if I am talking about cosecant theta, then what is the range? Range is that the absolute value of y, uh, let me write it in two ways, that y is greater than or equal to 1 or y is less than or equal to minus 1. This is cosecant theta. Now what we are doing is we are multiplying by 5 and taking away minus 2. So now we can write our range as it is y belongs to real numbers where y is greater than equal to if you multiply by 5 right 1 it get 5 minus 2 so it becomes greater than equal to 3 or y is less than equal to if I multiply minus 1 by 5 I get minus 5 minus 5 minus 2 is minus 7 you get the idea. So range for this function should be y greater than or equal to 3 or y less than or equal to minus 7. So that is how you get domain and range of this function. I would like you to go through this video once again. Try to understand the whole concept. Okay. And the only thing which I have not drawn here is I have not shifted my final wave in this form which I will do in the next video right so have a good look at it and try to understand the concept here so we are working on domain range and i think it's very clear to you that the domain will not include pi by 6 plus minus n pi by 2s and the range will be greater than or equal to 3 and less than or equal to minus 7 i hope that helps thank you